So, you've deployed a network monitoring tool in your environment to keep your organization secure, and that's awesome. The solution has been running for some time now and has generated a number of alerts to notify you that threats have been detected. But, your team is already spread thin and there are only so many alerts they can look at, let alone investigate and remediate. Some of them could be critical threats, others could just be a false positive. How do you know without investigating? That's where Cisco Stealthwatch is different. It uses a combination of behavioral modeling, multi-layered machine learning, and global threat intelligence to analyze network telemetry, yielding high-fidelity threat detections. And Stealthwatch allows the user to configure, modify, and really fine-tune the alarms and alerts raised, giving you a great deal of control in customizing the solution to your own business logic. Because, let's face it, every organization's workflows are different. Within the actual Stealthwatch product, when you log into the initial uh, Security Insight dashboard and see the web UI, you'll see a number of alarms present with on, within the system that have been triggered depending on the kind of activity going on in that network environment. From here, you can drill down into um, any of these alarms for additional information about the host triggering the alarms and other pertinent information, such as uh, security events that contributed to them and whatnot. We're going to be approaching this from an investigative standpoint. So in this case, we're going to look at uh, our top alarming hosts here on the left side and drill down into a specific host that's, that's triggering alarms to see what tuning is in place for a given alarm that this host is triggering. In this case, we're going to investigate our buddy right here, 10201.3.149. Clicking on the host, brings up the host report, which is an overview of all the observed activity that a given host has been responsible for within the network environment. Here, we're going to look at the uh, upper level alarm categories that this host has triggered alarms in. Specifically, we're going to look at data hoarding. And so we'll click on that to drill down into additional information for that alarm. And we see uh, this presented to you, which gives you an overview of the of additional information about that. And from here, we're going to click on details. Clicking on details brings up a list of the individual security events that contributed to the upper level alarm category being triggered. From here, you can investigate each of these events further. You can click the down arrow to get additional details about what triggered this event and why, as well as getting a description of the event. And the other really cool thing you can do is click on the ellipsis here under the actions column and select tune event. Doing so will bring you into Stealthwatch's policy management feature. And here you get an overview of the, those events that contributed to that particular alarm firing. In this case, you see suspect data hoarding, and this is listed twice because this particular host exists in two separate host groups, and in, as such can have multiple policies applied to it. What's also really cool here is that it shows you which of these particular policies are responsible for the alarm firing by labeling them as effective. So you can go here, click the down arrow to get additional information about this, including you know, the, a description, and you can make modifications as needed to the particular policy to suit whether or not you want to alarm or you want to be more sensitive or less sensitive or whatever makes sense for your given network environment. In that way, it's that easy to drill down on a specific alarm that's being triggered by a host within the product and get more information and make changes to it. One of Stealthwatch's most powerful features is the ability to model policy that you may have in your network environment and detect whether or not hosts that are present and operating within your network environment are adhering to those policies. You can do this easily by making custom security events. To do so, you go under Configure, Policy Management, and make sure you're on the Custom Events tab of the Policy Management screen and you'll be able to see what custom security events you currently have established. Here I've created a number of different custom security events that are typically of interest to Stealthwatch customers. For example, I've built out uh, custom security events around compliance systems communicating to hosts out on the internet, host systems that are using TLS 1.0 encryption, telnet activity out to the internet, uh, SMB connections from the internal network out into the internet, and remote desktop sessions going onto the internet as well too. And these are just a few examples of what Stealthwatch can do. And so now, let's say you want to create your own custom security event to monitor policy within your network environment. And let's say in this case, you want to see if anyone from your engineering group is communicating to systems that belong to your compliance group with a encryption type that's currently outlawed by your policy. For example, TLS 1.0. So to build out that custom, uh, a custom security event that will alert you if such a communication takes place, 
You go to create new policy and custom security event. You give that security event a name and you can give it a, a meaningful description just so it, it makes sense if someone else comes and looks at it. And then you would actually sit here and you'd enter the parameters for this particular event in order to, to tell Southwatch when to alert you. So again, we're looking for uh, people that belong to engineering. So we would do subject host groups. We would dig down into the host group tree. And we'd find engineering hit apply. Then we would define the peer host group that they would be communicating with. And again, we're looking for the compliance systems. Now you can also make use of the search function here as well too. And there's compliance. You select that. And then you would define the type of uh, communication and other parameters that would trigger the alarm. In this case, we're looking for a specific encryption type. Now, as I go through the list here, you'll notice there are uh, a number of different options that you can select to be alerted on here. So it's not just in the encryption or the, 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 the few application types that I mentioned earlier. You can trigger off of like ports and protocols, um, the amount of uh, data going back and forth, permit and uh, deny firewall actions, all manner of different things. So but in this case, we're looking for the encryption type. So we'll select that and then we'll enter TLS 1.0 here. And you'll notice as I'm filling out this, a plain English description of what will trigger that alarm is populated along the top here, which is also very nice. When you're satisfied with your, your custom security event definition, you can hit, click save to save it and it will appear in the list here. And then to activate it, you would switch it on from here. And then now anytime any host in your, your network engages in activity that matches with this, Stealthwatch will raise an alarm which will be displayed on the dashboard as a policy violation. So there's your quick and dirty overview of custom security events in Stealthwatch. Relationship policies provide a way for you to monitor the current state of traffic between host groups with the additional ability to filter the traffic by applications and surfaces. If traffic behavior exceeds your defined thresholds, you can then have it generate an alarm. So let's create a new relationship policy to see the level of control it can give you. Southwatch allows you to choose the groups of hosts that you'd like to monitor the relationship between. So for the rule I'm going to be building here, let's say you want to monitor the traffic moving between hosts belonging to your compliance systems and hosts belonging to your various business units. You define the two host groups that make up this relationship in these fields by clicking the plus button and selecting them from the host tree. And here we search for the compliance systems host group, select it, and we select the host groups comprising our business units. Now if you'll note, I'm selecting this parent host group for business units. By doing so, this also selects all the hosts that are represented and all the various children host groups represented here as well. Now, once I've done this, if I want to monitor on those specific traffic patterns that I was discussing before, so if you remember, we were interested in whether or not traffic going between these two host groups passed a certain bandwidth threshold, or if uh, the communication between the two of them started reaching undesirable levels of latency. To monitor for those specific events, you click the Select Events button here, and choose from the list. Now, there are a number of different things that Southwatch can monitor relationship for, but here we're interested in relationship high traffic and relationship round trip time. We select those, we click apply, and the relationship events list is populated with those two. And from here, you can click the down arrow to begin setting the parameters around which you want Stealthwatch to trigger an alarm. Now each event we've chosen has a different defined criteria that can be collected by Stealthwatch and alerted against. The relationship high traffic alarm can be set to trigger if observed traffic between hosts in both groups exceeds a defined bits per second threshold. The relationship round trip time alarm can be configured to alert if network latency between the defined host groups exceeds the threshold you've defined as acceptable. Now, if you wanted to, you could monitor specific applications and services traffic moving between these two defined host groups, and you would define those here. making your selections as needed. 
Now you'll note, there are an awful lot of different services and applications StealthWatch can monitor against. Again, you can pick whatever makes sense for your enterprise as part of this particular alert. Now, in this case, we're interested in all network traffic observed moving between our compliance systems and business units. So I'm gonna X out of here, go up to the top right, and click save to save the event. Once you've saved the event, it will appear in your relationship events list automatically sorted to show it to you so you can review it for accuracy or if you want to make any changes. And that's all there is to that. Thank you.